this time, this should be set aside for a time for the godly thought. And then this morning, we'll have our own elder, Michelle Rose, bringing the godly thought. Will you rest on your feet? Thank God for this woman of God. We thank God for his healing power in her life. Praise God. Glad to have her back in the pulpit once again. Praise God. Just give her a hand. Praise God. That's a really good yes, sir. But I'm sure on this morning, she will give you something that you can glean from all week long. Let's welcome Elder Michelle Rose. Praise God. Bishop, if you'll bear with me this morning, good morning to everyone. I have I would like to go to John 3. John 3. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. And then I'm going to jump over to John 19, verses 38 and 39. And for time's sake, I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible, John 3, 1 through 6. And the Bible and the word of the Lord reads: Now there was a certain man among the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler, a leader, and authority among the Jews. Verse 2, who came to Jesus at night, remember that, who came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know and are certain that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do the thing, these things, these wonder works, these miracles, and produce the proofs that you do unless God be with them. Jesus answered him and said, most solemnly I tell you that unless a person is born again, a new from above, he cannot ever see, know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb again? Now, this is from the Message Bible. I got to give it to you because it's really good from here. In verse 5 and 6, he says, Jesus said, You're not listening. Let me say it again. Unless a person submits to this original creation, the wind hovering over the water creation, the invisible moving the visible, a baptism into new life, is it is impossible to enter God's kingdom. When you look at a baby, it's just that, a body you can look at and touch. But the person who takes shape within, but the person that takes shape within, is formed by something you can't see and touch. The spirit and becomes a living spirit. Chapter 19, verses 38 and 39. And after Joseph of, of Arithmia, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, being a disciple, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, he besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of mare and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today's godly thought is, is your salvation a secret? Is your salvation a secret? Now, the, John is... A quick word. John is for the beginning Christian, the begin, the a new Christian, and for a Christian that is of old. He wants us to really understand who Christ is, and that's why it was so important, Bishop, that I read all those scriptures the other day. Vincent said you didn't read enough scriptures, but I wanted you to be able to really understand what John was trying to tell us through the story of Nicodemus. Now, when I first began to read that story, I told you that Nicodemus was a Jew. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Is your, is your salvation a secret? Do you come to Jesus by night? Can people see your soul salvation? Can they see the light that you shine for Jesus? Are you living a holy life? Nicodemus, this great Jew, this Pharisee, he set up what they call the Sanhedrin Council, which is similar today. He would probably be like a pastor or a preacher or an elder, and he would probably be like on the Supreme Court. So here he is, supposed to know all this stuff about Christ. What I want you to really understand is that Nicodemus understood the Old Testament. So gee, when he came to Christ, he said, Teacher, I know that you can't do these things without God. And, he, and Jesus is looking at him, and I'm thinking Jesus is 
saying to Nicodemus, now Nicodemus, you know the word. You know that I'm, I've been preached about in the Old Testament, but I'm understanding that you really don't know what you're supposed to do because you come to me at night. You come to me in secret. You don't want people to know that you really believe in who I am. I want to serve notice to you today that life is short. And I don't want you to think that life is short thinking that you're going to die. I want you to realize that life is short emotionally, life is short spiritually, life is short physically, and we only have a certain amount of time to do the work of the Lord. And Nicodemus knew this. So he went to Jesus and he said, Jesus, teach me what I got to do to be saved. Teach me so that I can live holy and be holy like you're holy. Teach me so that when people see me, they can see the anointing of you that's, that's in me. Teach me, Lord, so that I, when I pray for someone, they can feel my prayer going up to heaven. Teach me so that when I say be comforted in the word of God, they can be comforted. Teach me, Lord. Teach me. So Jesus began to teach Nicodemus. He began to tell Nicodemus things that Nicodemus already knew. And after he explained to Nicodemus things that he already knew, just like with us, we come to Bible study, we come to Sunday school, we come to church, and we learn about the things that we're supposed to do, but we become religious in the things that we're supposed to do. It's not in us anymore. And we have to be renewed. We have to be refreshed. We have to let people know that for God I live and for God I die. So what Nicodemus did in that 19th chapter, help me Holy Spirit, what he did in that 19th chapter, what he did chapter 3. He went to Jesus at night in secret so people wouldn't know that he was believing on Jesus Christ. He went to him with Joseph, a guy that also was following Jesus in secret because they didn't want to be killed at that time. But now Jesus had, was killed. He had been crucified. And now they in bold daylight said, give me the body of Jesus Christ. I want you, be, you to be able to say, give me the body of Jesus Christ. I ain't scared to say that I'm saved. I'm not scared to say that I'm sanctified and filled with the precious Holy 